Good morning. We begin this morning's business with general questions. And question number one from Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when the full membership of the Interim Board for the South of Scotland Enterprise Agency will be announced. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Uh, membership of the South of Scotland Economic Partnership was announced on the 17th of January. Colin Smith. Can I uh, thank the, uh, the, the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? Although he did promise that the new board would be up and running by the end of last year, I do very much welcome the fact that he has now uh, at last answered the, uh, announced the, the new membership. I'm sure it had nothing whatsoever to do with the fact that my question was being asked today. But does the, the Cabinet Secretary... Does the Cabinet Secretary share the concerns of stakeholders, particularly within the business community and the third sector locally, that there hasn't been consultation with them on who the members of this new interim board should be? And will he give an assurance that when it comes to appointing the members of the full agency itself, that that will actually be something that will be led by the stakeholders in the south of Scotland and not something that will be imposed from Edinburgh? Does he also accept the concerns that are being felt by a number of stakeholders in the local area that the £10 million budget that he's announced, which is about 15% of the budget of the Highlands and Islands Enterprise Agency, won't deliver the transformational economic change that we really need in the south of Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. I think we should be uh, willing to let Colin Smith go along in his own little bubble that convinces him the announcement was due to the question that he asked. Um, and also, I would... I would say in relation to the uh, £10 million which is referred to, what did Labour do? Did Labour ever establish such an agency? Did they ever put £10 million in the south of Scotland? Absolute nonsense. And I can also mention as well the tweet that Mr Smith put out attacking the board uh, for its membership and also the allegation that these are somehow SNP appointees. Well, how biased are we if you've appointed people like Lord Thurso, Wendy Alexander, Susan Deacon? Absolute nonsense. And I do wonder how Colin Smith, as a local MSP, expects to have any kind of productive relationship with this vitally important board going forward if he's going to attack them on the day that they're appointed. This board will make a big difference. It will lead, of course, to the establishment of the substantive body, which we will bring forward legislation for in this year. And this partnership, which has now been established, and the £10 million that we'll have to spend is far more than the Labour Party ever did in Dumfries and Galloway or the rest of the Scottish borders. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I am pleased to see so many women on the interim board. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that one of the economic challenges for the south of Scotland is encouraging young people to stay and move to live and work in the area. How will the board seek to address this? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I agree that securing diversity on the partnership was uh, very important, and we are ambitious for the partnership. It has an opportunity to bring a fresh approach to tackling the challenges and opportunities of the south of Scotland. Uh, the partnership will deliver a, a prioritised work plan tailored to the needs of the area and informed by the views of people across the area. And as I've mentioned, we've announced £10 million in additional resources to support it in its activities. And as part of its engagement, the partnership will want to seek the views of young people to shape its work. We want to see a south of Scotland with a thriving economy where young people have opportunities to develop skills, take up apprenticeships and have good quality jobs and see the South as an attractive place to live and work. And I know that Professor Griggs, the chair of the partnership, would be happy to meet with the member to discuss the work of the partnership. Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm encouraged uh, by the wide breadth of knowledge and expertise appointed to the South of Scotland Economic Partnership. However, there does seem to be a lack of uh, tech focus, and can the Cabinet Secretary outline whether and how this board will help feed into and improve Scot South of Scotland connectivity, and what role the enterprise will have in this regard? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I think there is actually substantial uh, technical expertise within the body, and I know the member will have perhaps just seen the announcement of the names, and that maybe it would repay some further investiga investigation um, to find out some of the technical expertise that underlies that. But I would make the point that, and I'm grateful for the member's statement about the quality of the people on the board. I think that's the right approach to take. I think there are some exceptional people on that board. But it's also true to say, as I've mentioned, that we're bringing forward this year the proposals for the substantive body, and that will allow us, of course, to have a chance 
chance to see the uh, work of the current members, but also to think about the future composition of that board. We have acted quite quickly on this, as we've been asked to do by other parties in this chamber, uh, but I can assure the member that the engagement that she seeks to see happen, not least in relation to connectivity, and for that reason, I'm very pleased, for example, that we have hauliers represented amongst the membership on the board as well. That will be taken forward uh, by the board as part of its priorities work plan. But I'm happy to discuss that further with the member if she feels it's not progressing in the way that she'd like to see. Question number two, Stuart Stevenson. To ask the Scottish Government what impact the R100 Superfast broadband programme will have on rural areas. Cabinet Secretary, Fergus Ewing. Uh, Presiding officer, the R100 Superfast Broadband Programme will make rural Scotland one of the most digitally connected places anywhere in Europe, underpinning and enabling future economic growth. It is the only universal superfast broadband programme in the UK, uh, and I believe it demonstrates the Scottish Government's ambition to make Scotland a world-class digital nation. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, I very much welcome what the Cabinet Secretary has just said. Uh, given that the Scottish Government is seeking uh, to make uh, broadband speed universally available that is three times as fast as that which the UK Government is planning to deliver, can the Cabinet Secretary identify any particular benefits of that higher speed in Scotland will have in rural areas? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Stevenson is correct, Presiding Officer. The UK Government might consider that 10 megabits per second are adequate for homes and business. I certainly do not. And that is why we have stipulated in our programme that we will seek to deliver 30 megabits per second uh, for every home and business in the country by the end of 2021. The digital sector is now worth over £4,000 million to the Scottish economy. And, presiding officer, research shows that uh, public investment in broadband returns around £20 in net economic impact for every one pound of public investment. By our investment of 600 million pounds to deliver that universal 100% access to superfast broadband, I believe that we will see created in Scotland a digital infrastructure that allows businesses across the country, particularly in rural and remote areas, to modernize, digitalize, innovate and grow. Peter Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I welcome the 600 million promise for the R100 programme, which will be spent in the years 2019 to 2021. But I find it exceptionally disappointing that the budget for digital connectivity this year mm -hmm. has been slashed from 136 million to 58.5 million. And this will obviously impact on rural premises in North East Scotland, which are desperately needing a decent broadband speed now. How can the Cabinet Secretary justify slashing this year's budget when so much remains to be done? Exactly. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, the, the £600 million is the largest investment in the UK in any single broadband project ever. The money will be used when it is required and not before it's required. Uh, that's how you do government. And incidentally, if Mr Chapman and the Tories uh, want to have any vestige of ability to claim that they're standing up for Scotland, then I would suggest that what they do is apply their attention to the fact that the UK's contribution to the £600 million uh, for broadband provision, which is a reserve function, presiding officer, is just a measly 3%. 3%. 3%. 3 do the Tories support that? Uh, I think we will have a prolonged periods, period of radio, broadband and mobile silence from the Scottish Tories on this issue. Not one has got the backbone to stand up for Scotland. Mike Rumbles. Could the Cabinet Secretary tell us when residents in rural Aberdeenshire, for instance, who are receiving regularly about seven or eight megabits per second, might find out when, how they can find out when they will reach this 30 megabits per second, which is promised. When will they be able to find out? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, well, thank Mr Rumbles for a perfectly reasonable question, and there are two answers to that. First of all, during 2018, provision of uh, new broadband access will continue to be provided under our highly successful two digital superfast broadband contracts. 
uh, at an investment of £400 million. Uh, and also there will be further commercial investment during the year. Uh, and uh, the details of the contracts uh, uh, which we will be awarding under R100 in respect of three segments in Scotland, uh, North, Central and South, uh, will of course become available as soon as possible after the contracts have been awarded. Mm. Plainly, we'll have to deal with the tendering process, uh, go through that in accordance with the competitive dialogue process to get best value for money for the taxpayer Absolutely. and keep Mr Mackay as happy as he can be. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But uh, we, we also have to take care uh, to get it right, and that is what we will be doing in one of the most complex tender exercises there has been in Scotland. And once uh, we complete that, we will of course provide information as soon as we can to communities throughout Scotland who understandably wish to know when they themselves, each person, each business will have access. But we will provide that access by the end of 2021, and that's a pledge that only this government yeah. is making. Question three, Jamie Halker Johnson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on progress towards meeting waiting time targets in NHS Grampian. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. The Scottish Government continues to work closely with colleagues in NHS Grampian on a daily basis to monitor the extent of winter pressures and to make sure capacity is managed so that the Board continues to deliver safe and effective care to support improvements around all key performance targets. NHS Grampian has received more than £8 million this year to improve all parts of the patient pathway, outpatient consultation, diagnostic tests and inpatient and day case treatment. A number of initiatives are already underway to support sustainable improvements, including additional theatre sessions being delivered across a range of specialties. We have allocated more than £1.3 million to NHS Grampian to support resilience across unscheduled care pathways over winter. Jamie Halker johnson I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Um, last year, I raised the case of my Murray constituent who had been waiting for heart surgery in NHS Grampian. Thankfully, my constituent's surgery was scheduled for this week, uh, 16 months after the original GP refer uh, referral. And I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will join, in, uh, join me in wishing him well. However, the figures show that over 2,000 people a month are still waiting for too long for treatment in NHS Grampian, which has a knock-on effect on uh, island health boards who send patients to Grampian for treatment. Will the Cabinet Secretary assure us that she will continue to assist NHS Grampian to improve waiting times and ensure that no one else has to wait this long for treatment? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I uh, first of all uh, wish um, uh, the constituent uh, that, uh, that Jamie Halco Johnson referred to uh, wish him a speedy recovery um, from his uh, uh, procedure? Uh, yes, I can uh, say to the, to the member that we are working very closely with NHS Grampian and all boards to make the improvements that need to be seen. That is against a backdrop of uh, increasing demand for services, although we are putting record levels of resources in. And of course, the budget that is forthcoming uh, sees a further uh, a big uh, increase in funding for the NHS, all of which will help to make improvements in the treatment uh, and care of patients. In addition to that, he will be aware that we've also launched a new access collaborative programme being taken forward by Professor Derek Bell, which uh, will make similar improvements as we've seen to unscheduled care, obviously leading to our A&E departments in Scotland being the, the best performance across the UK for two and a half years. That was through the, a collaborative programme that is now being replicated for uh, elective care. I think that will make a big difference. So investment, but also reform, uh, so that we can make sure that uh, patients are getting timely uh, access to, to treatment. And Asawa, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that the failure of NHS Grampian to meet treatment standards is not because of the efforts of NHS staff who continue to go above and beyond, but is actually the responsibility of the Cabinet Secretary and the Scottish Government who have failed to adequately staff our wards and have failed to give the resources and support that our NHS staff need? Cabinet Secretary. Well, what I would say to Anisawa is that NHS Grampian, like other boards, have been trying to recruit staff. The funding is there for the staff, but they have had difficulties recruiting 
staff. They've had difficulties, for example, recruiting theatre nurses. Now, I don't know what Anna Sarwar thinks can be done if the money is there for the post. They go out and try to recruit, but have difficulty recruiting. It's not just a Scottish issue or a UK issue. It is an international issue of the shortages in some of these specialties. But NHS Grampian is working hard to ensure that they continue to deliver safe patient care and make the improvements uh, that they are trying to improve. I'll just end on this note, though. Uh, it is a bit rich for Anna Sarwar to come here uh, demanding additional resources for the NHS when his party is not putting forward additional resources for the NHS. That is not your priority in the budget, as was laid out very clearly yesterday. So it does seem a bit rich to come here demanding more money when your own budget proposals, well, such as they are, um, don't actually prioritise the NHS at all. It's a bit rich, don't you think? Question, question number four, Richard Lockhead. Can I ask the Scottish Government if it will provide an update on progress towards the expansion of Scottish ambulance service provision in Murray? Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. The Scottish Ambulance Service has been working in partnership with NHS Grampian to put additional uh, ambulance resources in place in Murray. Uh, discussions are ongoing to look at what ambulance resources are required in Murray in the medium to long term and a business case is anticipated to be ready by the end of this month and this will be jointly reviewed by both organisations. Richard Lockett. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer and I'm sure she'll want to join me in paying tribute to the Scottish Ambulance Service for the role they've played in dealing with the winter pressures in the NHS over these past few weeks. As the Cabinet Secretary will know from a recent meeting with ambulance workers in Elgin, for which they were very, very grateful, the service has had to cope with its own pressures in Murray over the last few years. And as the Cabinet Secretary said, there has been some recognition of that with additional resources. But outstanding issues still remain in terms of an additional new emergency ambulance to be based in Elgin and the on-call situation in Dufton to be addressed as well. So I'd be very grateful if the Cabinet Secretary could keep a close eye on this and put pressure on the Scottish Ambulance Service to expedite these long-standing decisions. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, first of all, can I uh, pay tribute to the Scottish Ambulance Service along with Richard Lockhead. Uh, um, they have done a, an amazing job over the last few weeks in particular in dealing with uh, winter pressures. Uh, can I also say I, I had a very productive uh, meeting with many of the frontline staff in Elgin and pay tribute to R Richard Lockhead himself for raising uh, these issues on, on a consistent basis. As he will be aware, uh, there are a number of initiatives underway uh, to help to address those issues. I will be keeping a very close eye on them and would be very happy to keep Richard Lockhead informed of those developments as they go forward. And question five, Ruth Maguire. To ask the Scottish Government what role it considers pharmacies should play in supporting the health of the communities that they serve. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. Uh, community pharmacy plays an important role in the provision of NHS pharmaceutical care, providing highly accessible services for people both in hours and out of hours. We want more people to use their community pharmacy as a first port of call for the treatment of self-limiting illnesses and medicine-related matters, and also for ongoing self-management support for people with long-term conditions. Ruth McGuire. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that folk can both receive help for themselves quicker and help relieve pressures on hospital staff during the busy winter period by making use of the excellent advice and treatment available from community pharmacists? Yeah, yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, part of the communication uh, strategy this winter has been very much to highlight the role of, of community pharmacy. Uh, and uh, the, the member might be aware that uh, last year, our strategy for pharmaceutical care, achieving excellence in, uh, in pharmaceutical care, was published uh, in August. And it emphasises that the pharmacy team in NHS Scotland is an important part of the workforce with specialist skills and much needed expertise in medicines. They will also form part of the uh, multidisciplinary team uh, on the back of the, the new uh, GP uh, contract uh, uh, once agreed. So uh, we are uh, very much um, keen, very keen indeed, to promote the role of community pharmacy. Question six, Jenny Gilruth. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to support the 70th anniversary of Glenrothes. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes the planned programme events due to take place in Glenrothes over 2018, being organised by local groups in Fife Council uh, to celebrate this important date. While no specific Scottish Government activity is planned in favour of locally developed and owned celebrations, those local events will link to wider Scottish Government initiatives such as the Year of Young People. 
Jenny Gilruth. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Uh, this week, Glenroth has lost a true community champion in David Nelson. I hope the Cabinet Secretary will join me in sending condolences to Davy's wife, Maureen, and to their family. Can the Cabinet Secretary assure me that she will discuss with Fife Council the ways in which the 70th anniversary can be celebrated properly, and is she aware of any funding which community groups may be able to access? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, anniversaries of town should not just be about the physical place, and it is, as it is the people that make the place. Uh, people like David Nelson, uh, the Glenrothes community champion, and I do extend my condolences to Mr Nelson's family. I would happy to, be happy to discuss with Ms Gorouf and Fife Council how any national activity of funding can align with the Glenrothes 70th anniversary this year, and I understand that Edinburgh International Book Festival is already planning to do so. Thank you very much. That concludes general questions. We move on now to...